Hi everyone, my name is Claire Blake, formerly known as Claire Carmichael. I recently got married and had a name change, so it's Claire Blake now. But welcome to this webinar and hopefully I'm going to give you something to take away from this. Fingers crossed. So a little bit about me before we get started. I'm a registered nurse with over 14 years experience within healthcare, private and NHS. Uh, I've worked in general practice, I've worked in sexual health, LGBTQ plus clinics as well, private transgender healthcare clinics. Um, I've worked a little bit in elderly care and lecturing in universities as well. So hopefully I can bring something to this video for you that you can take away, put into practice hopefully, and hopefully it's going to help you along the way, fingers crossed. And just some of my previous roles that I've done in the past. So I was the co-chair of the GPNSNN network. Uh, this network is for anyone that wants to go into general practice as a newly qualified nurse, as a student on placement. We are there to help support, give advice, things like that to, to people out there. So if you have a little look on social media for us, go and follow us, ask any questions that you want to, if you want to go into GP um, and things like that. I'm no longer the co-chair though, I've had a lot going on, so I've had to take a few steps back from a few things, that's one of them. And the other one is my next previous role, uh, GPN Shared Decision Council for NHS England. This was something that was set up at the very beginning of the pandemic, and what this was, it still is actually, still ongoing now, and it's amazing, um, but every month, nurses from all over the country within England uh, from bottom to all the way to the top to the, the you know chief exec nurse Ruth, Ruth May um, all come together to share the, their wisdom what's been going on in general practice primary care to share things like the good the bad the ugly what we can learn from things what what is best practice and guidelines so that we're all singing on the same hymn sheet but also to put in changes if there's any positive changes to be put in place as well so if you have a look in your local area and if you want to get involved have a look have a, a little search and yeah get involved anyway that is enough about me but i hope everyone's doing okay let's get started so starting university, my top tips, some of you watching this webinar, you might not have started university yet, you may be waiting, you may be starting next year, you may have just started in September and you're thinking, okay, what do I need to do now I'm at university? So this is just some tips to help you get started in those first few weeks, fingers crossed, something is going to help. So the first things to get checked and done is your occupational health checks. We all need this as nurses to check for a hepatitis B and things like that. Get bloods done, have your vaccinations if you're not up to date, that sort of thing. Make sure all of that is clear. Get your finance sorted. Um, unfortunately, there's no NHS bursary anymore. I was on the NHS bursary, so I had to make sure that all of that was in place. But if you've got any sort of finance from student governance and things like that, um, make sure it's all sorted and in place before you start university or as you're starting university. Um, if you've applied for maintenance loans and that thing and that sort of thing, just make sure it's all set up. Have a look at what dates you're going to get paid and things like that. Just make sure it's all OK, because sometimes tech issues happen. Things don't go very well. And yeah, just make sure it's all set up. Get to know your university and get to know your timetable. Those are my top two things when you start university you need to know your way around uh th that's the biggest thing the, the last thing you want to do is show up on the day that you start 9 a.m and wonder where on earth your lecture hall is that you need to be and you're walking around and round and round and then you're late for class and then your last one in and you don't know where to sit and anxiety is already going through the roof <laughs> that was me that was me on my first day this is why the tip is in there be organized be prepared Go to the university like the week before or something. I mean, you might already know the university. You might have already been there for open days. You might have done a previous degree. That's fine. But if you don't know the university, just get in there the week before, maybe two weeks, whatever, before. Um, walk around, know your rooms, where the rooms are, what levels different rooms are on, things like that. So you know what rough direction you're going if you see the room number, if that makes sense. And get to know your timetable, get to know it well, know when you're at university, when you're online, because sometimes it's not face to face, it's online. So know the difference in your timetable and what that looks like for you. Um, and just get to know your timetable, because then you can organise and prioritise the rest of your life, which is nice. Get to know your personal tutor. I am a personal tutor for about 25 students at the minute. 
Um, so get to know your personal tutor because they are going to be the ones that are there to help support you, to signpost you. Personal tutors are not there to read your draft work. Don't think that you can send your personal tutor the first draft of your assignment and they'll read it and say, yeah, it's great. Don't do that. That's not what personal tutors are for. Personal tutors are just there to support you, to signpost you if you need any help, support, well-being, that sort of thing. They'll be your personal tutor throughout the, the whole three, four years of your university degree as well. Um, and they'll also be doing your reference at the end uh, when you apply for your newly qualified nurse post, which seems might seem, especially if you've just started university, it might seem like a long, long way away. Trust me, blink and you're there. University goes so fast, like a blink of an eye, like I said, it's incredible how fast it goes, honestly. But yeah, your personal tutor is going to be the person that does your reference for you for your job. So get to know them, get to know them well, bribe them with some cookies, maybe. <laughs> That's a joke. Don't bribe them. Please do not do that. And lastly, make friends. Honestly, if I did not have the support of my friendship group at university, I'm not sure I would have got through because nursing is so tough. Any university course is tough. Assignment writing is tough. Exams are tough. Placements are tough. Everything about it is just tough. You're going to need a good supportive friend group at university who all know what it's like to be a nurse and you all just pull each other through and you all motivate each other. And I'm not going to lie, it took me a good couple of months before I ever made friends because I was a massive introvert. I was anxious as anything going to university. I kept myself to myself. I just wandered around looking lost most of the time uh, and just hoping for the best. And it wasn't until a girl came up to me in the Costa queue uh, whilst I was waiting for my coffee and she came over and she said, do you want to come and sit with us? And I was like, yes, and I shall never leave you now. And I just never left them for the next three years. So... <laughs> Whether they liked it or not, I was their friend. Uh, but no, I, I made the nicest friend group and we, we had a really nice year in our, our whole cohort anyway. We had a really nice bunch of nurses, so I was really, really fortunate like that. But if you already have friends at university, you might have gone together maybe, you might be already made friends on your first days or whatever. And if you see someone alone like me, please go and make friends with them because... They're probably an introvert, they're probably lost, they're probably scared, they're probably anxious, they're probably terrified of everything. Please make, just befriend them, please, please do them a favour. Balancing responsibilities and budgets. This is so important that nobody talks about, nobody tells you the things out there to help you. For some reason, uh, student life is hard and it's probably harder now with the climate, the financial situation our country is in cost of living has risen and everything is just absolutely disgusting out there. I don't know how people are surviving, uh, to be honest, not to scare everybody, but you're on a student budget now. Um, but these are my biggest tips to help you hopefully make the most of your student budget. The first thing I did as a student was make a list of what goes in and what comes out every month. Um, and that is the biggest thing you need to do. You need to know your finances and you need to know them well. I still do this now. I still have my list on my phone and I edit it each month to what goes in and what goes out so that I know where I'm at and what I've got to spend. So when I worked out my incoming and outgoing, my incoming was about 6 50 every month. So that included the NHS bursary and student finance payments that I got. And then my outgoings was 6 5 5 So I was £5 minus <laughs> that I had to find from somewhere. Then uh, that was just for my rent, my, my phone bill. Uh, travel expenses, food, that sort of thing. So I needed extra money to live on every single month, basically. So I had to work. I had to work on the side of university. And I think many people do that because, again, it's the world we live in today, the cost of living, all that jazz. Um, and it is doable. If you're not already working part time alongside uni, it is doable. I, I found plenty of time to do it and earn enough to get me by, which is quite nice. Anyway, student budget, think wisely. Don't be afraid to shop cheap. Don't be afraid to ask for student discounts at the checkout. Don't be too proud, okay? If you need to go and buy cheaper brands and things like that, do it. I, for sure, ain't paying hundreds of pounds for an expensive brand for, for what? If I can buy anything cheaper, like I will get the cheaper pastas, the cheaper rice, the cheaper peas, the cheaper soup, the tin soups and things like that. 
shop shop wise shop on a budget um, make cheaper meals as well um, like i said book buy pasta rice is fantastic because that's your carbs sorted and then have a cupboard this is what i used to do i used to have a cupboard full of things like tin tomatoes beans spaghetti bread soups all different herbs and spices as well herbs and spices are expensive initially but then they will last so then you can add to your pastas and your rices so you've always got a meal if that makes sense biggest tip that that is the way i still uh, I'm still on a student budget, um, but I still always have those essentials, pasta, rice, spices and herbs in there. So I've always got some flavour, some carbs, I'll be sorted. Also frozen vegetables and fruits always in my freezer as well, because at least then you've always got some sort of vegetable or something to put with it. Meat doesn't really matter. I, I do eat meat sometimes, but as long as I've got those things, my carbs, my veg, my spices and herbs and things to make it taste a bit better, job done. Also look across social media about batch cooking. So if you're doing all of your week's cooking and you're getting it all in tubs and cooking it all at once and then freezing it or refrigerating it for the week, that's going to save you so much money, not just on um, your food budget, but also your electricity, your gas bills as well, because you're doing it all at once there and then and you're, you're planning it for the week. So then you don't have to use your cooker for the rest of the week because it's all there. It's all done. So have a look at that because that is just a fantastic way of doing it as well. I mentioned student discounts earlier. Do not be afraid to ask for your student discounts and your freebies. Please, please, please don't be too proud. Get it. We're students. We're poor. We need it right now. Every penny counts. Also, the university will probably, the student union and things like that, will probably try and sell you the NUS student card. They'll, they'll try and get you to pay for three years. I think it's like £30 or something for three years. Don't do it. You don't need it. Please don't waste your money. Please keep that money in your pocket. There's free apps and free student um, discounts that you can get out there. Things like Student Beans app is amazing. I've used it, tried it, it's done, it works. Uni Days app, tried it, done, it works, both free. Blue Light discount as well. If you've not already heard, there's a blue light discount that we can get as well. I'm not sure if we can get it as students. Potentially, if, if you're working for NHS, you've got an NHS email or something like that. But have a go, see if you can register for it. And that's £5 a year for that one. So like I said, get your freebies, uh, get your free apps and things like that. Don't pay for it. Also, look up free events, free socials, because, you know, we need to have a life. We need to take some time out, but when we're on a budget. So we need to look for the three things. So have a Google of free events in your area, socials, things like that, that's going on at the university as well and get involved because it's really important that we take some time out for us. But like I said, we, ha we can't afford to be paying all crazy prices that's out there at the minute. So look up the free things because the free things are very, very good and there's plenty of them out there. Take your own lunch, tea and coffee to uni with you. Please save your money. And also the biggest tip with that is something that I used to do is take your travel flask, take your tea bags, take your coffee, take your milk, take your sugar, and then if you ask at the um, coffee counter, if you've got a coffee shop um, at your university, depending on who does it, I know Starbucks do it, Costa do it, the ones that we had anyway at Birmingham City University do it, um, ask them to just top you up with hot water. They will give you free hot water. Um, so that will save you on tea and coffee bills. And obviously take your own lunch. Don't, don't pay the prices uh, because it can get very, very expensive if you're going to buy lunch and teas and coffees every single day. It's yeah, save your money with students. Housing, housing, housing. People want the student accommodation and the student experience, but it's so expensive. One of my friends paid, I think, £425 a month for her student accommodation for this little tiny single room. It's just, I just thought, what? I, I went into a shared accommodation, completely private. I had other housemates, adults. They were all professionals and things like that. Weren't nurses, but there were other professions. Um, I paid £360 a month for my rent. That included all my bills. My room was massive. It was a huge double room. I had my own bathroom and then the rest of the house you share. Um, but it was it was just so much better, so much cheaper as well. So have a look around. Don't just jump in at student accommodation. Save your money where you can. Please, please, please. And last, the biggest tip of all of these, if you don't take anything away, please Google the NHS travel bursary. Not many people know about this. For some reason, it doesn't get shared or anything. So please, please, please save it. Tell your friends. You can get your travel 
and accommodation paid for if your placement is further than university. So if you've got to travel a couple of hours, for example, like I did, um, to your placement because it's the other side of the city, a lot further away from university, um, they will pay um, for your travel and if you need to stay overnight then they'll, they'll pay for your hotel and you fill out the form and you claim it back but you have to make sure that you keep your receipts keep your receipts and everything to prove that that is what you've done and you have to be so it has to be where your house is so have a google maps or whatever app you've got uh, map it from your house to university how many miles house to placement how many miles and if your placement is further then you can claim the expenses top tip your first assignment, oh, this is the big one, I'm sorry. Uh, most people dread academia, writing, assignments, assessments, presentations, all of it, actually. Just, we want to get into placement, we want to get hands-on, we want to do the work. Academia is just not at our forefront as nurses, unfortunately. Um, and it's one of the things that you will be very, very anxious about more than likely. And you're not going to be amazing at it. Some people are. Some people can knock out an assignment the night before it's due and get 90 plus percent. I've got no idea how people do that. And I am in awe of those people. I wish I could do that. I have to plan and prepare for weeks and weeks and weeks and potentially months, depending when it's been launched, the assessment or the assignment. Um, I'm one of those people and it takes me a long time to, to finally submit it. So I need to be organised. I need to get on the ball with it. Um, but please, 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 first thing you need to do is get help, get support uh, to help you succeed. Don't just struggle and then fail. Get the help now. If you know you struggle with critical analysis, go and get the tutorials. If you know you can't Harvard reference and you've got no idea how to, go and get the help. If you don't understand your assignment or your assessment, ask about it. Ask your module team to explain it in detail to help you because if you don't understand what you've got to do you're not going to be able to do it so yeah get the support don't just struggle please go to your academic development department i know birmingham city university have got an amazing team that help with assignments and uh, drug calculations and all sorts of things so if you've got an academic development department go to them get the help get the tutorials for whatever you're struggling with go with a specific idea of what you need help with don't just go and say i need help to write this assignment because that's not going to work you need a plan and you need to know what you need help with before you go, if that makes sense. Uh, also, your university library usually support um, do support tutorials as well, one to one. This is something that I used as well as a student because I realised that I was searching for data all wrong. I was using CINAHL uh, Complete to search from for journal articles and things and nothing was coming up. But... I didn't realise I was searching for them wrong. There was like different buttons that you had to click and different ways of doing it. And I had no clue until I went to the library and they told me how to do it correctly. This was in my second year. Um, and after that, I was like, oh my God, this is amazing. I've got loads of journal articles now. So please go to the library and get support as well. Now, two big ones here. If you don't take anything away from this, take away these two documents. The Manchester Phrase Bank is incredible. This will help you structure your assignment and use really nice words and things like that to help it flow. Manchester Phrase Bank, I still use these two documents on the list below. The second one is University of Nottingham have released an assessment brief guide. If you struggle with when you get your assessment brief and you look at it and you go, what does this mean? What do they expect of me? I don't know what I'm supposed to be trying to write. Uh, this is the guide for you because it breaks down the language of the assessment brief and it tells you what they want from you. So then you can write your assignment. I know you can thank me later. <laughs> please, please, please download it, get it, read it, do whatever you can with it, please, because it's going to help you so, so much for your assignment. Uh, that and the Manchester Phrase Bank. My last big tip for this section is when your assignment gets launched or your assessment gets launched, Download your assignment brief, download your marking criteria. There are two separate things. Your assignment brief tells you what to do. So, you know, write an assignment on COPD with a patient, blah, blah, blah. Your marking criteria is a grid. It's got all the marking, 40%, 50%, 60%, 70%, 80%, 90%, whatever. And then it tells you the expectations, so how to meet that percentage. Download those two things and start your assignment there and then. This is what I had to do to... to 
to do my assignments because like I said I, I take a long time to process information and get my head around things and stuff like that um but another reason for this is this is all your marker will have in front of them. Your marker might be an external marker from a different university. They might not be in the lectures. They don't know. It's not always the module team that marks your paper. And all they will have in front of them is the assignment brief and the marking criteria. So if you are doing your assignment on those two things and doing it well, you should be on the right lines for a pass. As long as you've written it correctly and not missed anything and things like that. Um, but yeah, but this is why I always tell people just have those two things in front of you and start the assignment now. Uh, that's something I did before the lectures were even launched. And then as you're going through the lectures, you can just tweak it and edit it. Job done. Easy. She says. And last but not least, prepping for your first placement. You'll be glad that this is the last information slide. You can stop listening to me droning on and on and on and hopefully put into place all the things that I'm telling you. <laughs> Placement is the biggest, and other than your assessments, the biggest anxiety inducing thing is going to your first placement, uh, your first day of any placement actually throughout the whole three, four years, however long you're at university, um, because it's a new area, you don't know what to expect, you don't know the team, you don't know what you're doing, you don't know any of the knowledge that's expected, the specialism that you're going into that you will not sleep the night before it's just it's really stressful i'm really sorry i'm not really selling nursing very well if you haven't started yet <laughs> but you're going to be okay i promise just put uh, this is why this is here to give you some tips to help ease those anxieties because this will really help first thing you need to do is call in advance get your shifts get your practice assessor name that sort of thing i used to call mine about two weeks in advance just to get my rotor and things like that uh, quite often again not to put you off uh they will tell you yep yeah, that's fine come in monday seven o'clock and we'll give you the rest of the rotor when you start and you'll just have one day and that's it you don't know the rest of your shifts so you can't plan things uh but if you're one of those people that you need to plan because you've got childcare and things like that to sort out please tell them that on the phone say i've got childcare that i really need to sort out i need to know my shifts in advance and hopefully they will sort that out for you Next tip for this section is do a practice run so that you can gauge if you're driving where parking is, how to get there, what the roads are like, what the traffic's like. Also, if you're getting the bus or transport, other transport, things like the train, for example, um, know where the bus stops, where the train stops, how far you've got to walk, where you've got to go, what part of the hospital is it, know your way around the hospital and how to get to the hospital. Because the last thing you want to do is to have to be delayed and get late and things like that and be even more anxious and stressed on the day. Already stressing me out just thinking about that. <laughs> I'm taking myself back to placement. Do the practice run because it's going to relieve that anxiety 100%. Find out when you call them what staff room facilities they have. And it might be a cheeky question to ask them because they're thinking, you're a student nurse and you're already asking where the kitchen is. Uh, but this is just so you can plan your meals. So you so you might have things that you want to heat up, for example, for your lunch. Uh, so you want to know if they've got a microwave, a fridge to store your food, a kettle, that sort of thing. Uh, just ask them so that you can plan your meals then for when you go in. With that, I'm going to say make sure you get your breaks get your break, get your break, get your break. You don't get paid for this, people. You're not paid. You're not a fully qualified nurse. You're not counted in the numbers. You're supernumerary. Make sure you get your break. And I know it can be a challenge, but you have to remind yourself you don't get paid for this. They shouldn't be taking advantage of you. You have to get your break. Please speak up. Speak up. Speak up. Raise that voice a little bit in a professional, nice, calm manner. Um... Because, yeah, like I said, you don't get, just, that's enough, Get just get your break. And whilst I'm talking about that, get support and help if you need it. Speak up, like I said, if you need it. If the team aren't listening to you, go higher, go to the manager, go to the placement team, go to the university placement team, go even higher to the chief exec if you have to. Um, get the support and help if you need it. Don't be afraid to say something, which I know uh, can be a challenge and people don't want to because they fear of backlash and things like that. But this is your journey, your learning experience. You pay for this. You need to speak up and get the support if you need it. 
make sure you research the area before you go. So for example, I was on an orthopedic ward, so I looked up different orthopedic uh, terminology, the bones in the body and that sort of thing, different surgeries that people might have, just to get me used to the terminology in the area and what to expect when I'm going into that sort of area. Um, and it just gives you a bit of a heads up when you start as well, which is quite nice. And lastly, write down a list of things you want to learn, any clinical skills, anything like that, things that knowledge wise that you want to learn, physical things that you want to do. Make a list so that when you go and you're going on your first day and you have your, your first sort of meeting with your practice assessor, um, go in and you can say, oh, I've got this list of clinical skills and things that I really want to learn about the area. I've had a research for the area. You look keen. It looks good, I think. And I think you're if they're a good practice assessor, which they should all be. Uh, they will really love that as well, that you're prepared and you know what you want to learn from the area. So that is it from me. I hope you've taken something from this. All these tips are from my new book, How to Make It as a Student Nurse. Go and have a look. Check your library as well because the universities are starting to put it in, I think. Uh, so check if they've got it. You can always request it as well uh, at your university and see. Um, but yeah, but everything's in there. The new book's just got everything from starting university all the way to qualifying new qualified nurse life. It's got everything you need for your three years. The stuff people don't usually tell you. A little bit like what's in this webinar. Uh, yeah, it, it's an amazing book. I wish I had this book, not to be big headed or anything like that at all. But I wish I had this book when I was going into university and it's stuff I was looking for to help me. And it just wasn't out there, which is why I created the book, because I want to help students because... Like I said, nursing is tough. It is so, so tough. And if anything from this book can help somebody, my job is done. So yeah, so that's it from me. Have a great day and I shall see you all next time.